Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good trading day. Um, crazy action, absolutely crazy action. Uh, right off the word go. Um, I, again, going into today, if you watched uh, the weekend the weekend update, um, you know we, we knew we had a short week. Okay, uh, we also I also echo the sentiment that if there is going to be any good aggression. Uh, this week is probably going to be Monday and Tuesday, right? Because again, once you get to Wednesday in a holiday shortened week, again, it's the busiest travel time uh, of the year. Okay, you have Thanksgiving Thursday, uh, we're, we're closed on Thursday, half day on Friday. Most people won't be trading because it's going to be a, a graveyard, absolutely graveyard. So we had basically today, tomorrow, and maybe, 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 maybe possibly the first part of Wednesday, maybe the first, you know, two, three hours of Wednesday, and then it's over. Go go eat some turkey. So we didn't know what we were going to get today. Okay, um, the market had some pretty good value setups this morning. Okay, um, I didn't know how many of them were going to be um, confirmed. Okay, it, it's always you know that's always the mystery. We don't know how big the confirmation is going to be. We don't know how how, how hard the uh, cash flow is going to be. Uh, we don't know any of that stuff. If we knew that stuff, well, we'd be buying and selling at the highs of every single trade and shorting and covering at the lows. It just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. At least it doesn't work that for me. Um, so we, we, we had our structure uh, in play today. Um, the plays that were in front of us, we were watching. Um, I talked about Netflix in the morning. I thought the downgrade today, there was a shot that it went, went red to green. Again, you had all these, we were talking about Netflix now for about a week. Every single time it gets any type of uh, traction, um, they hit the stock, whether it's some sort of Disney news, streaming news, some sort of downgrade today. And you saw the Disney news get engulfed. You saw uh, this morning, especially uh, you had two down, I think, I think you had two downgrades, today, not just one, you had two. And I, I kept on saying the longer it kept on staying above that 309 level, that was the earnings breakout, there was a shot it was going to go. And uh, not only did, did it stay above the earnings level and it kept on, I just kind of to show you on the chart. Not only did it stay above uh, the earnings highs, right? So these are the earnings highs, 308.75. It kept on bouncing off, right? It kept on bouncing off the five days support. So we knew that 313, the recent highs were going to be very, very important, 312.69. So again, the point is I'm making on Netflix is not because, well, the stock you know, took out 313, the stock went. The point is when you have bad news, okay, downgrades, uh, macro industry news, for example, you know, uh, you know, Disney Plus going into the space, streaming, all that stuff. And the stock still embraces that news, still embraces the bad news, puts it aside. That's the ultimate bullish indicator how strong this market is. And if you saw today's action in beta, again, I don't know about anything else in the market. Again, I don't care. It, it's, it's again, for us, at least for me, it's the same names over and over again every single day. Again, some names will go. I won't trade because, again, that's not my sweet spot. But if you concentrate on the same names, and this is the whole point of having a relationship, having some sort of familiarity with the names you trade day in, day out, understanding the tendencies, those are the names you're going to play over and over and over again because that's where you feel comfortable. That's where, uh, that's where your confidence is coming. And when you know, understand price, market, action, structure, once these things confirm, uh, they usually do the right thing. And today's action was... Uh, super duper aggressive. Okay, super duper aggressive. Uh, if you look at the cues macro wise, again, we're just kind of going. I mean, it, again, everything that we talked about on the video on Friday, again, this is why I say I don't care if I'm wrong, theoretically. If you have an opinion, but the price action doesn't support your opinion, well, go on the other side. That's the whole point. So the idea of traders are afraid to be wrong. Again, we're wrong every single day. But again, if you don't have an opinion, okay, if you don't have an opinion, and if you don't have a bias and you're not waiting for that confirmation on that bias, you have nothing. Okay, All you're doing is sitting, hoping, and praying that something good will happen. And that's the whole point 
of trading channels. That's the whole point of these pivots. We don't care which way we go. We have an opinion, right? I actually have an opinion. And I said, well, you know, again, if the, going into the going into today, if the market starts building and 200 of the queues start getting out, blah, 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 we start going along. Again, who cares, right? Again, I'd rather be wrong every single time, theoretically, than, than, than being wrong financially. Financially is okay. Once I see, uh, excuse me, financially is not okay. Once I see a channel confirming to the upside, that is the play. And if you look at uh, today's session, ridiculously aggressive. Okay, the three, four names that really got aggressive, they got aggressive very, very fast, very aggressive, uh, and they just didn't look back. The only one that was really weird, and we caught Facebook twice today, uh, first on that $200 break that we talked about even on the weekend video, uh, and we caught a really nice uh, rising bounce. Once it broke that first time, that 200, the first time the rising bounce held and went back to the highs of the day. So it wasn't for that. It was just kind of weird the way this Facebook trade. I really thought it was going to have a big, big move today. It actually did have a nice move, uh, but not exactly how I thought. So going into tomorrow, before we get into the pivots of today, again, short and weak, China on, China off. Nobody cares. Again, you don't want to get too creative. Again, I say this all the time. When you're trading, you're trying to simplify your trading as much as possible. If you see a stock weak, right, in a strong market, it's probably going to go lower. If you see a stock strong, in a weak market, right, it's probably going to go higher and vice versa. It's very, very important to kind of simplify your trading to such a point that it makes sense. You don't need 900 different indicators to tell you right or wrong. Your eyeballs are the most amazing test. So, for example, today, right, we saw Tesla get rejected at supply pre-market, right? We started talking about Netflix pre-market. And I started saying, hey, well, look, you know, you know, of all these pivots, well, there's a pivot 338 to the downside. Okay, why do I think the stock is going lower? Well, the market's telling me. The price action's telling me it's going lower. So if it can't go higher, right, what's it going to do, right? And this is the whole point of supply, understanding where stock stops. So when something doesn't go higher, it must go, right? And that's the whole point. Pivots don't care which way it's all about the value into that direction. So let's talk about it, right? Unless something materialistically comes out overnight, what is stopping this market? If you get in the market, who cares about the indexes? What is stopping these individual prices to get more aggressive going into tomorrow, going into Wednesday, obviously Thursday we're closed, and finishing kind of the week uh, on the strong side? Pretty much nothing. So again, unless something materialistically changes in the next 24 hours, Again, how can you not be bullish? So let's talk about that today's session. Uh, Facebook, I mean, big move, right? Really, really big move. Again, anytime Facebook goes a dollar on one candle, okay, especially on a big macro area, that's a big thing. That's the equivalent of Tesla going up like two, two and a half. That's a big, big thing. Uh, that Tesla, that Facebook 200 break was awesome. Even, even better in a weird way, not only the, the, the entry, we kind of knew it was going to stop around the 201 area. Again, here's where supply was, right? This is where the supply was, and there was perfect sales, and really, really perfect sales. Uh, then we got into this area. Then we got into this bounce here. It was right over here. Uh, where the hell was it? It was right over here. It was right over here on this bounce, and the stock traded uh, traded within 20 cents of the highs and made some more sales. Uh, the problem is I got stopped out of my runner uh, right around here. Right around here, I got stopped out of my runner because it just it just confirmed the, the downward channel, and obviously it started going lower. I still like the trade. It's just very, very odd that it didn't continue the upward buys, especially after that rising support uh, got confirmed, and then they took it almost to the highest day. Very, very weird, but again, it's Facebook. It's not Tesla. It's not Netflix. So a uh, really strong trade there on uh, Facebook. Uh, BYND, I'm still watching. They had some news intraday, and nobody cares. Nobody cares. This thing just drifts lower and lower. Uh, it traded down to the 76th level. I'm still waiting for that 76 breakdown for the 73 test. BABA, very, very strong move. Uh, 88.70 needs to build. Here was Alibaba, right? So forget about all this. Here, 88.70, all pre-market, guys. 88.60, 88.65, 88.60, and ta 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 right? Really big move. I said there's potential to 90 and change. Why? Because, well, that's the supply zone on the daily chart. Again, I still think the stock does go higher, but really nice move on uh, really nice move on Alibaba. Uh, and the video was great. The video was really really good. Uh, here was you know here was the, the outline game plan. It got upgraded today. Uh, there was a sneaky pivot uh, to 1680, 217, uh, 217, 70s initial supply. So I said the first move is only going to be roughly around a buck uh, just because of supply. Again, there's no guarantees the stock will ever 
get to supply. But I said there's a macro channel that it needs to reclaim after that supply. And if it say starts taking out 217.75, 218, it could go. I mean, this can go. And that's why I said this is a trade for experienced traders only. And that, that was the point. That was a beautiful move. Beautiful, beautiful trade on Netflix. Um, so I got long right here. I mean, here's here the 1680s, right? We're not, again, you don't need to buy in the top of the channel. Here's 1680, right? 21680, 21680, and just exploded. Just absolutely exploded. Uh, one is high, it's like 221. So big move on the video. I was pretty happy uh, with the trade. The funny thing is after I sold one up another two bucks, so it was insane. Like literally three minutes later, and I thought I had a good trade in it. So uh, that was good. Uh, NET, not a big move. Again, I mean, what do you expect? Look, there's a difference between trading Tesla and trading NET, right? Uh, NET broke 18, went to 1820. Again, what do you, what do you want out of 18, 20, 25, 30 dollar stocks, right? What do you want? What do you want? Dollar fifty, three dollars. You know, again, at some times you have to trade the stock based on reality than expectations. That's why a lot of these trades, these 18, 20 dollar stocks, I'm not going to trade them because again, there's not enough liquidity for me, just not enough move. There's not enough meat. So if there's no liquidity and there's not enough projected average true range. Again, that's why trade what's comfortable for you. That's the name of the game. Again, 20, 25 cent move, nothing really big there. Uh, Roku just couldn't really get going, okay? There was a pivot there. It ran up about a buck or so, but it really couldn't get going. And, and that was very, very odd. Um, so here was the pivot. We, we talked about 6150, right? So we talked about the 6150 area right over here. So here was a 6150. I said, if it could reclaim 6150, I think there's a shot against the 63. Obviously, the name of the game with pivots or any type of trading. I don't care if you're a swing trader, whatever the case may be, you always want to pay yourself on the upside. That's the game. If you're not paying yourself to the upside, I don't care what your time horizon is or what's the point. Okay, you can't just go for the Hail Mary every single time for the all or none trade. You got to pay yourself. And that's something I always, especially convey to newer traders, just kind of build your bank and use break even as you stop. But again, that's the game. So again, wasn't a big move. Uh, 6150 went to 6250 and then slowly but surely you just saw it got tired it got tired really really big and uh, stock actually went red on the day again I don't think this is a short yet okay don't you know, again don't get fooled and stocks that make big moves go into rising support they will trap you if you anticipate the breakdown the only way I could get I would get any type of notions to actually get short Roku again if it starts getting below this 154 area that we kept on uh, bouncing off last week. Uh, so again, if you caught some uh, Roku, God bless. Uh, Tesla obviously never reclaimed uh, 350, 351. Uh, Boeing never reclaimed this 376 area. I actually like it. I actually like this Boeing area going into tomorrow above this 376. Uh, KRTX, I said, hey, set an alert. If it starts building below, it can flush. Obviously, got nowhere near that. Um, yeah, so you know, big move, uh, big move on the video. I was very happy with the video. I was happy. I said, boom, sarcastically. Obviously, that is the social media word for, oh my God. Okay. Uh, sarcastically. But yeah, boom, either way, regardless, it was really two, two good trades. But the first one was really, really strong. Uh, Alibaba was a very, very big, very, very big move here. And, um, right. And then, and then here, and again, this is before Tesla uh, Netflix woke up. I go three or four months of support, keeps on bouncing off. Obviously, never got there. And again, here's the point of pivots. Don't care which way they go. Uh, Tesla, 338, if it builds below, can flush. And uh, Tesla went down almost $4. Okay, and I still like it tomorrow going lower. Uh, here's the 338, and it kept on going lower and lower. Went down to 334.46. Uh, I'm watching this whole range here tomorrow, guys. I really am. This is the range here. If it starts cracking, uh, maybe it goes down back to 330. So I definitely will keep an eye on that as well. So really strong day. I mean, really, really strong day. Uh, I actually said in the video, um, I actually said in the video, I go, look, you know, Mondays have been very, very aggressive because traders are chasing price action. They want to redeem themselves of the previous week. If they had a bad week or if they had a good week, their eyes are uh, really wide open and they really go for more. And I thought, you know, I, and I think if, if any, especially traders with smaller accounts, if you only have three days to trade, Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Thursdays and Fridays are getting towards the end of the week. So there's going to be a lot of speculation money uh, that is going to be placed towards the end of the week for, you know, for more aggressive runs. Uh, so those are the days. Okay, those are definitely days you want to uh, concentrate on. So uh, let me give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow's session, see exactly uh, what we like. So let me start out with, yeah, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it. Um, I like this BLMN. 
Okay, I like this BLMN. Um, I don't know too much about it, but again, it doesn't really matter. Uh, BLMN, if it starts, you know, reclaiming 23.80, 24. Um, look, beautiful chart, beautiful long distribution, beautiful consolidation, looks really good. Uh, keep an eye on that. Um, FLXN. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.